Hi, this is Aaron from Sibling Rivalry, and today we're going to be doing a setup procedure for this King Rune printer. A machine that can make copies of almost anything. We're going to be doing a setup procedure for this King Rune printer. So what that's going to entail is leveling the bed, making sure everything's nice and square, which I've actually already done off camera just because it's a bit more intensive than what we, what we would be doing. And what we'll be doing as well is making sure that the nozzle is the correct distance from the bed so that you get proper bed adhesion with your prints. So I'm going to turn on the printer here. I just have the power supply just off to the side. Let this boot up. And there we go. Okay, so you can see here, there is this option that says leveling. You click that, it's gonna home the axis. And what you wanna do before you do this, if you plan ahead, unlike me, is make sure that this set screw is at the right height. I actually already had it set, so in this situation it's fine. Uh, what I actually did to both of my printers is I removed the spring that holds this thumb screw in place. That way you, it's easier for you to do finite adjustments and it doesn't bind up on the spring. The spring is good because it reduces backlash, but in this situation you don't have to worry about backlash because the part should be stationary. Like the part being the base here as well as that screw. So now we can see that the nozzle is down in the bottom left-hand corner. I had to think about my lefts and rights for a second there. Uh, and you can see a few options on here. So we've got points one through five. So you can see each quadrant on the print bed represented there by the little semicircles. And then there's one for the center of the bed. So what we're gonna do for bed leveling is press the first one. And what we're going to want to do is check the nozzle's distance from the bed here, which looks about good. So one trick that a lot of people will do is they'll have a piece of paper, like a thin piece of paper, and they'll just slide it underneath the nozzle and the bed and adjust the corner set screws here so that it'll raise or lower the bed and once you start to catch you just back it off just a little bit and that's generally a good point for your layer height. That's actually a similar process with CNC machining as well. Uh, so in this case it looks like it's perfectly fine. I've actually already squared everything up here so unless something's come out of whack this should be a fairly straightforward process. So the next thing we're going to do is press point two, and it's going to move the head along the x-axis here and reduce the height there. And I can actually see it's come up a little bit, so I'm going to adjust the bed height there just a tiny bit. You can usually eyeball this if you're uh, patient enough, and you can also just kind of run a quick leveling print which will include a file for in the link well we'll include a link for the file down below for a good print that is just like a single layer that will tell you if your bed is level so that looks good so we'll go on to point three and one thing you want to make sure when you're doing this is that you have your print surface completely clean so you can run over it with a razor blade just kind of like scrape everything off make sure it's nice and clean um, any melted little bits like i know on mine when i came out of the box the uh, corner here where it homes was melted a little bit there's a little speck there you might not be able to see that on camera uh, that's usually fine you can run a razor blade over it and it'll usually smooth it out but generally speaking you're not going to be printing right up to the edge you really shouldn't be to begin with because there'll be all sorts of weird properties of the print as well as the heated bed doesn't tend to radiate fully across the whole surface. 
it tends to have different hot spots. So you want to usually avoid the outer edge because that's where the heat tends to be substantially lower. So we'll check over here. And that looks actually a little snug. So I'm going to tighten up this one, which will lower the bed. It looks good now. And now this is the one tricky thing I find about this printer. It's not really that tricky, but because of the uh, position for the last two homing spots on this assisted bed leveling, your finger has to go under the bed here to select the option and you just gotta press it on the screen. It's a little, you have to kind of bend your finger a little weird, but it shouldn't be an issue for most people. And you could always use a stylus if you really wanted to. So this one, it actually is a little too close. So I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit, which again, will lower the print bed. And this could actually explain why my printer has been giving me some issues around this side of the this half pretty much if one of your corners is out of alignment the whole half of the bed could not work properly you'll should you'll probably be fine in the middle of your bed if you don't have this fully leveled but there could yeah you could have weird issues as you go further out so if you're printing a larger object as it spreads out it could start peeling up on the sides and curling which PLA curls a lot of people will say that it doesn't but it can curl quite easily, um, especially if it's there's issues with temperature and issues with adhesion. And now we'll just press the last button, we'll go to the center and we'll just check make sure everything's good there. Yep. So usually this last option is just kind of a check on the setup. You don't actually have to do anything because at this point you've done everything you can and everything should be fine. The only thing you can use this for really is for setting the bed height, like with that uh, set screw for the Z axis. And yeah, even there, you don't really need to use this for that. So I'll go out of this menu and yeah, I'll go through a few other options on here just to give you guys a quick run through in case you're not familiar. So you can preheat the extruder, which is great for saving a lot of time if, you're gonna, if you know you're going to be doing a long print job or if you know you're going to be troubleshooting a lot of things. So you can do click the extruder and it'll start heating and or actually my bad. Uh, you click this button and it switches between the heat bed and the extruder. So you select which one you're going to be heating up and then here you select the temperature it's usually the increments and then you've got the plus and minus there for how many increments you want to increase it so if we have it set to the 10 degrees celsius increment here and then we press this you're going to see it increases the amount here by 10 degrees if we change this down to one it'll only increase by one and then you press this and this will run the pre-warm procedure or the heat up procedure preheat procedure I should say actually sorry and yeah, you can see there the temperature for the extruder is starting to heat up it's getting 64 65 the extruder usually heats up pretty quick so usually it's not a huge issue but the, uh, the heated bed is something that will take a while to heat up a lot of times so that's definitely the preheat option is definitely handy for the heated bed because like i mentioned in our previous video it has a lot of thermal mass so it can take a while to heat up take a while to cool down and it's good to have it preheated so that you don't have to worry about that time as much even if it drops a little bit while you're doing the setup after you preheat it it still reduces your print time substantially or your setup time because you don't have to worry about getting from zero or getting from room temperature up to 60 or 90 or however hot you have this so yeah everything's all good here i'm just going to turn off everything because we don't really need to preheat anything right now so if you've got it preheated you can actually go into this extruder menu and you can select the steps for the extruder and you can extrude and reverse the filament out of it so this is good for like a manual filament load option. And 
you go out here, there's the move option, which allows you to jog the axis in the different directions. So there's X plus, and that's moving in one millimeter increments. So we can do 10, and we can do Y, and we can do Z. Yeah, and yeah, I know the uh, the lead screw here on the Z axis, which you can't really see because it's on the back. That uh, does bind occasionally, but you can just apply a little bit of oil on there, or even WD-40, and you don't have to worry about the binding too much to begin with. But yeah, uh, let's go through here and see what else we got. So we did leveling. We've got the extruder home. So. You can click home and it'll home all the axes, so it'll do X, Y, and then Z to the set screws or the homing positions that you have set up. So as you can see, it just did that. And you can manually do individual ones. So if you're trying to calibrate your Z axis so that you have the right height, you just press the home and it'll do that. And then what you want to do if you're trying to get the right Z height, you go back here to move, select that, move Z up a bit, and we'll just adjust this a little bit because I noticed that the uh, Z was a little, little out, more than I would like. So we'll adjust that, then we'll go back to home, press Z, makes the horrible screeching noise, and I've actually brought it a little too close. So. We'll go back, go to move, Z up, or Z plus. We will loosen this so that it raises up a little bit. Go back, home, Z, this is super exciting stuff right here. There we go, it's perfect. So, Let's see, is there anything else here that we need to go through? So you can set the fan speed, you can turn off the motors if they're currently stalled. Like right now, the motors are locked in place because I did a homing procedure on them. That was actually just forcing it to skip the, uh, the teeth on this. So we press motors off and then all of a sudden everything slides freely. So this is great for if you're removing a print from the bed and everything's locked in or something to that effect. There's language options, which I'm going to keep it to English. Fan, so you can adjust the fan speed, so we can do 100%. Fan in the extruder for the blower here. Starts picking up. We do 50%, and then we can do 0%. Now we'll back out. Filament change, so you can load or you can unload. So we're going to click the extruder option here. We're going to click unload. It's going to heat up. It'll give you a little message there. And then it will tell you once it's heated up. So we'll probably do a bit of a time lapse here while this heats up. And I'll show you in a second how to do the full unload and then reload. All right. So you can see here that it's got that little message up there. Heat, complete, uh, heat completed. Please click confirm for start unloading. It's not the greatest English, but whatever. Uh, click continue. I'm reading this upside down, so sorry if my, I, my reading is a little slow. So you can see it's ex reversing the filament here, and once it's out most of the way, you just pull at the remainder. Essentially, it's just pulling it out of the nozzle, and you can actually see the nice little strand of extra filament there. And we're just going to feed this in the other way. So we'll click confirm. And now we're going to load. So it's already at temperature. So what we're going to do is feed this through the runout sensor here. And then we're going to feed it into the extruder block. Feed it into the Bowden tube. You can actually feel it start to go in. And what I always like to do is just push it till you start to feel a little bit of pushback. And that's usually a good indicator that it's in the actual nozzle. So now we are going to click continue. 
Uh, it's loading the filament. And there you go. That's how you load and unload filament. And in case you, this is your first time on our channel, or if you're not aware of it, this is actually our third part in our dedicated King Rune printer series, which the information that we're sharing is general information for the most part. Uh, that's adaptable to any printer, but we're focusing primarily on this printer right now because this is what I have on hand and this is my workhorse right now. So I do all my printing on here. We're actually going to link the videos that I mentioned just now somewhere on the screen here. Ooh. We don't know where. We'll figure out the tile system in a sec and upload it there. Oh, well, not upload it, but we'll link it there and you can watch it. We'll also make this into a playlist so you can watch all the King Rune printer videos. And yeah, so if you have a power interruption, like I mentioned in the previous video where I was doing the camera mount, uh, if it's a proper power interruption, the printer should come on and detect that something was wrong. If it doesn't, you can just click this continue option and it will bring up the file that's on there and you select it and press continue and it'll start from where the printer last left off. So in this case, because I didn't have any prints going previously, it's not going to do anything or it'll start from the start of a print. If I select here, let's actually try this, confirm, yep, so it'll print from the start for this food clip file that comes by default on the printers. All right, so as you can see, it started printing here. Uh, there's not much else that I can really cover today off the top of my head. Uh, if you guys have any other questions or any questions about this printer or anything, please leave them in the comments below and we'll try and make a video for every question you guys have. Uh, if you haven't already, please check out our other videos on the channel. We've got videos on all sorts of different topics like mixology and instruments and all sorts of other cool stuff. Uh, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications so that you don't miss our uploads. We do a regular upload every Monday and we're going to start doing additional bonus episodes each week and potentially a additional episode each Thursday. So thanks again for watching and I hope you have a great day.